Hi, Mick. Hi. Pleasure to talk to you. And you, sir. So, happy birthday uh, of sorts. It's the uh, anniversary of Lou Reed's Transformer and, and your iconic art that went with it. Uh, and what we're talking about, uh, what, the, uh, the re-release of the book that you put out uh, about it all? Well, it's, it, we're calling it a relaunch because it was originally launched not long before Lou died in 2013. And, and it's a, a beautiful limited edition co-signed. Well, it is co-signed, although the original version was co-signed by Lou, but unfortunately he died before he could finish signing the edition. So this, we decided to suspend it, one, because we were running out of copies that were co-signed, and that's how it was being sold, and uh, and two, out of respect for Lou. And we were going to just figure out how to reconfigure the situation when I Tash and asked me to do a Bowie book and that kind of took the air out of my publishing game for a while anyway it's back it's it has my signature and has the Lou Reed estate signature but it also has 65 more images of Lou 50 of which have never been seen before and then I wrote another 2,000 words for it. But it's, it's the same book, and it's got Lou's blessing all over it because the main copy in the book is based on a conversation that Lou and I had talking about the times, the characters, and the pictures. I mean, there's so many great things about those pictures, and, and the album cover has become so iconic, as many of your pictures have. So, so what do you remember about shooting that day? Well, I do remember going backstage with David Bowie because that's how I actually knew Lou. Lou was uh, in London to record the Transformer album. And uh, place called it was actually a cinema, but converted on Friday and Saturday nights to a music venue. And interestingly enough, the next night... I always thought they were shot a week apart. I knew they were shot in the same location. But the next night, I shot Iggy's Raw Power cover. So that was an interesting brace, Transformer and Raw Power, probably within the same 24-hour period. So uh, somebody was smiling on me uh, on that particular day. Anyway, I went backstage to see Lou, and I remember... I, I thought that was the first time I met him, although Lou swears I'd actually briefly met him be for that so uh who knows but i do remember going backstage to see him and he was very very quiet and he told me in later years how nervous he was that night that was the first gig he'd done in quite a while i think it was the first gig he'd done since he'd left the velvet and um he he had like a pickup band that he called the tots from Long Island, and they, they just played in England on that particular little mini tour he did. Of course, I was mesmerized because Lou Reed, the Velvet Underground, to those of us that cared, that was a huge deal. Not that he'd sold many records, as he told me. I think over the four albums, maybe he sold 30 or 40,000 copies. So, of course, now they're all rank among the great albums of all time. But... You know, if you hang around long enough, things change, I tell you that. So, even including the value of, of, of all the pictures I shot back in that period, which were totally disposable at the time, as as was all rock photography, you know. It was just cheap fodder for the, for the record labels. When you look at those pictures, I mean, they capture that instant moment. But when you see these yourself, uh, which would be different than I would see them, like, do you remember the, the 10 or 20 seconds that follow that moment? I don't remember that particular shot. Obviously, I remember the sequence, but, you know, I shot quite a few images that night. I just remember looking at them afterwards, and I had circled a number of images. Now, this wasn't shot for lose for anything other than the fact that I wanted to shoot them. But I do remember going to see Lou, whom I didn't really know. I don't know. I mean, I had to process the film, make a few prints. No, I didn't even make prints. I think I just went and showed him the contact sheets. And he noted that one amongst the ones I picked out. So anyway, I went off and made some prints. And that shot actually, first time round, fell out of focus in the printing. Now, I really liked it like that. 
But on the other hand, you know, I didn't want to look like I was uh, not proficient. And so I made the, the shot, the original shot that was in focus, and showed them both to do. He jumped all over that shot. The original cover was conceived to be what ended up as the back cover. But once he saw that shot, he said, that's going to be the cover. So uh, if you see a film called, there is out there a little film, well, it's not so little because it's 93 minutes long, documentary called Shot. Yeah, and, and it's on Netflix now. Yes, it is, yeah. And in fact, now I've just found out it's actually going to show it on, the, on Virgin Atlantic on the flight film. So it's, it's been getting around. And, uh, but anyway, in there you see, I show the two images, the sharp you know, the way the shot was was actually shot and then the and then the image that was out of focus that became uh the cover for Transformer. But that was kind of an instant thing and I, and that you know, I suppose that really cemented our relationship and I saw him a lot throughout the seventies and he you know, I mean he loved all those pictures. We did. We didn't really have a falling out. I just got started to live in New York, and I was getting into uh, too much fucking cocaine. And then Lou was busy cleaning up, so we didn't see each other for a number of years. And then we started to see each other again. And then out of that came this book, and uh, it's pretty beautiful. I'll tell you that. Well, we're really lucky that you had your camera around and. I feel lucky to even get the 10 minutes to talk to you here. So uh, so thank you, and congrats on the relaunch. And, and by the way, speaking of birthdays, another happy birthday uh, to the cover of, of Queen's Sheer Heart Attack that you shot uh, that's also celebrating its anniversary. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. People, I know, I often forget that one because of the Queen 2 album cover that they copied for Bohemian Rhapsody, and that's the one mostly people want to talk about. Anyway... It's an interesting life if you, if you hang around long enough. It was a pleasure to talk to you, Mick. Thanks so much. And you, Carl. Bye-bye. All right, bye.